Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about applications of Taylor polynomials. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to explore an application of Taylor polynomials used to approximate functions, which are extremely useful to computer scientists since polynomials are the simplest of functions to evaluate. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the approximation of a function at an input value using Taylor polynomials. And then we're going to use the remainder theorem of Taylor's theorem to determine the accuracy of using Taylor polynomials to approximate function values. So suppose we have a function f of x, and we know the function f of x is actually equal to the sum of the Taylor series at x equals a. So the function f of x can be written as a Taylor series, n equals 0 to infinity, the nth derivative of f evaluated at a divided by n factorial times the quantity x attract a all to the n exponent. So this is the Taylor series for the function f of x. So in the previous video, we talked about Taylor polynomials. t sub n of x is actually the nth partial sum of this Taylor series, and it's called the nth degree Taylor polynomial of the function f of x at x equals a. And so it actually can be written as follows. t sub n of x is the Taylor series, k equals 0 to infinity, of the kth derivative of f evaluated at a divided by k factorial times the quantity x attract a to the k exponent. It's really f of a plus the first derivative of f evaluated at a divided by 1 factorial times x minus a in parentheses to the first power plus the second derivative of f evaluated at a divided by 2 factorial times the quantity x attract a squared and then so on up until you get to the nth power on x, or the nth derivative of the function, it'd be the nth derivative of f evaluated at a divided by n factorial times the quantity x attract a all to the n exponent. Well, one thing to notice is that the first degree Taylor polynomial actually would be this. It'd be f of a plus f prime of a divided by 1 factorial. Well, that's just 1. So you'll have f prime of a times the quantity x attract a. This was actually discussed in a first semester calculus course. It actually is called the linearization of a function f of x at the value x equals a. So in other words, you're trying to approximate a function using a linear function. In other words, Taylor polynomials of higher degree is a generalization of linearization, which was discussed previously in a single variable calculus course. So the concept of linearization was that the value of the function at x equals a can be approximated using the slope of the tangent line at x equals a, which was actually a linear function. So this can be extremely useful actually when you have a calculator is not available to you when you want to evaluate a function at the value x equals a. So if you have the function y equals e to the x and you want to approximate using a linear function, this was called linearization. You find out what is the slope of the tangent line for the function y equals e to the x at x equals zero. And so the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And if you evaluate the derivative at zero, you'll get e to the zero, which is equal to one. So the slope of the tangent line at x equals zero is one. And also the original function, f of x equals e to the x evaluated at x equals zero is also one. And so at x equals zero, the y value is one or the y-intercept is one, which means that your linear function or linearization to the function y equals e to the x was the function one plus x. Well, you can use Taylor polynomials now of any degree to approximate a function whenever you're near the center. We're going to explore the idea of Taylor polynomials that can be used to approximate the value of a function by examining the function f of x, which is equal to e to the x, using Taylor polynomial approximations at x equals 0 0.2, so you're really close to the center at x equals 0, and also at x equals 3, which is not close to the center at x equals 0. So in this table, we have the values of the Taylor polynomials in one column. We have the first degree Taylor polynomial, the second degree Taylor polynomial, the fourth degree, the sixth degree, the tenth degree, and we actually have the function itself, f of x equals e to the x, and we actually have the Taylor polynomial approximately it whenever x is equal to 0 0.2 and also the function evaluate at 0 0.2 and also the function evaluate at x equals 3 for each of the Taylor polynomials and also the function itself. So notice that the Taylor polynomials are extremely accurate whenever x is equal to 0 0.2 since it's actually really close to its center for a Maclaurin series where a equals 0. However, notice whenever x is equal to 3, the approximations are not as accurate for the function evaluated at x equals 3 because x equals 3 is much further away from the center, which was a equals 0 in this case. So the values in the table give a numerical demonstration that the convergence of the Taylor polynomials, t sub n of x, to the function f of x equals e to the x, it actually needs to be very close to the center to have an approximation that's very accurate. So therefore, we can say that the function f of x converges to the sum of the Taylor series as the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth degree Taylor polynomial of x is equal to f of x. So note, whenever we use the Taylor polynomial t sub n of x to approximate a function f of x, we have to ask the following questions. One, how good of an approximation is it? And then two, 
How large should we take the n to be in order to achieve a desired accuracy? The remainder term from Taylor's theorem can be used to answer both of these questions. So recall that the remainder term from Taylor's theorem was this, r sub n of x is equal to f of x, the original function, subtract the nth degree Taylor polynomial, t sub n of x. So the error can be calculated as taking the absolute value on both sides of the equation. The absolute value of r sub n of x is equal to the absolute value of f of x subtract t sub n of x, the difference between the original function and the nth degree Taylor polynomial approximation. And so the remainder theorem from Taylor's theorem said this, the absolute value of r sub n of x is less than or equal to some number m divided by n plus 1 in parentheses factorial times the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus 1 power, where this number m is actually the largest value or the maximum value of the n plus first derivative of the function evaluated at x. So let's do an example to find out what is a linear and quadratic approximations using Taylor polynomials to estimate function values. So consider the function f of x, which is the cube root of x. Find the first and second Taylor polynomials for the function f of x whenever x is equal to 8. Use these two Taylor polynomials to approximate or estimate the value of the cube root of 11. And then also, how accurate is the Taylor polynomial t sub 2 of x whenever x is between 10 and 12, including 10, and also including x equals 12? So if we're going to find out the first and the second Taylor polynomials of the function f of x, we actually need to take two derivatives. So the original function f of x is the cube root of x, which is equal to x to the 1 third power. So if we evaluate the function at 8, we have the cube root of 8, which we know is 2. Now let's take the derivative of the function f of x. f prime of x is equal to, using the power rule, it would be 1 third times x to the negative 2 thirds power, after you subtract 1 from the exponent. And if you evaluate the derivative at 0, and if you evaluate the derivative at 8, you'll have 1 third times 8 to the negative 2 thirds exponent. Well, if you simplify this, it'll be 1 twelfth. And if you take the second derivative of the function f of x, using the power theorem, you'll get this. You'll get negative 2 ninths x to the negative 5 thirds exponent after you use the power rule again. And if you evaluate the second derivative at 8, you'll have f double prime of 8 is equal to negative 2 ninths times 8 to the negative 5 thirds exponent. And if you simplify this expression, you'll have 1, you'll have negative 1 divided by 144. So that means the Taylor polynomial of degree 1 would be t sub 1 of x, it's f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. In other words, it's the linearization of the function f of x, which was cube root of x whenever x is equal to 8. The f of a would be f of 8, it'd be 2, plus f prime of a would be f prime of 8, which was 1 twelfth, so it'd be 1 twelfth times x minus 8. So the first degree Taylor polynomial would be t sub 1 of x, it's 2 plus 1 twelfth times the quantity x subtract 8. And now the Taylor polynomial of degree 2 would be as follows. It'd be t sub 2 of x, it's equal to f of a plus f prime of a divided by x minus a in parentheses, plus f double prime of a divided by 2 factorial times the quantity x subtract a in parentheses to the second power. Well, we know the first two terms. That was 2 plus 1 twelfth times x subtract 8 in parentheses. Now the third term would be f double prime of a would be f double prime of 8. We know it's negative 1 over 144. So it's negative 1 over 144 divided by 2 factorial. So that's 2. So it would be 1 over 144 times 1 half times x minus a in parentheses to the second power. So that would be x minus 8 in parentheses to the second power. So the second degree Taylor polynomial would be t sub 2 of x would be 2 plus 1 twelfth times the quantity x minus 8 subtract 1 divided by 288 times the quantity x subtract 8 all squared. So if we're going to use the Taylor polynomial of degree 1 whenever x is equal to 8, then we can estimate the cube root of 11. t sub 1 of x was equal to 2 plus 1 twelfth times the quantity x subtract 8, which means that if we have x is equal to 11, we have t sub 1 of 11 would be 2 plus 1 twelfth times the quantity 11 subtract 8. Well, that would be 2 plus 1 twelfth times 3, and that is equal to 2.25. If we use the Taylor polynomial of degree 2 at x equals 8, then we can obtain a better approximation for the cube root of 11. T t sub 2 of x would be 2 plus 1 twelfth times the quantity x subtract 8, subtract 1 over 288 times x minus 8 in parentheses squared. Well, if x is equal to 11, we have 2 plus 1 twelfth times 11 minus 8 in parentheses, subtract 1 over 288 times 11 subtract 8 in parentheses squared. Well, if you approximate this, you actually get 2.21875. From Taylor's theorem, we can actually find the error using the remainder term whenever n is equal to 2 because we have a degree 2 Taylor polynomial and we know the value of a was equal to 8. So the absolute value of r sub 2 of x, the absolute value of the remainder term, when you have a degree 2 Taylor polynomial would be less than or equal to some number m divided by 2 plus 1 factorial times the quantity absolute value of x minus 8 to the 2 plus 1 exponent. Well, if you simplify this, it'll be m divided by 3 factorial 
times the absolute value of x minus 8 to the third power, where the m is the largest value or the maximum value of the third derivative of the function f of x in absolute value. Well, since the x was greater than or equal to 10, we know that if you take x to the 8 thirds power, that is greater than or equal to 10 to the 8 thirds power. And if you look at the third derivative of the function f of x, you actually have 10 27 times 1 divided by x to the 8 thirds which would be less than or equal to 10 27 times, well, if x to the 8 thirds is greater than or equal to 10 to the 8 thirds, and we have that in the denominator, it actually will be less than or equal to 10 27 times 1 divided by 10 to the 8 thirds, which if you approximate this, you'll actually be 0 0.000798. So we're going to take the value m as this value, 0 0.000798. So if m is 0 0.000798 and the x value is between 10 and 12, as stated in the problem, including the endpoints x equals 10 and also x equals 12, then we actually have, if you subtract 8 on each part of the inequality, you actually have 10 subtract 8 will give you 2, less than or equal to x subtract 8 in the middle, and also 12 to subtract 8, you'll have 4. So x subtract 8 is between 2 and 4, including 2 and also including 4. That means the absolute value of x minus 8 is no more than 4. So now going back to the remainder term, we know that the absolute value of r sub 2 of x is less than or equal to m. Well, that's 0 0.000798. We have 2 plus 1 factorial was equal to 3 factorial. That's 6. And we know the absolute value of x minus 8 can be no larger or equal to 4. So that will be 4 cubed. And so the absolute value of r sub 2 of x is less than or equal to 0 0.000798 divided by 6 times 4 cubed, which is approximately 0.008512. So as long as the x value is between 10 and 12, including the endpoints, the approximation for the cube root of 11 is accurate to within 0.008512. So this finishes our video on applications of Taylor polynomials. We talked about how to determine the approximation of a function at an input value using Taylor polynomials, and we also used the remainder term of Taylor's theorem to determine the accuracy of using Taylor polynomials to approximate function values. If you have any questions about the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about three-dimensional coordinate systems.